So it's been a few days since my video on coding went up, and uh, there was a lot of a lot of responses and questions on YouTube and on Reddit and on Twitter and on the social media networks that I haven't heard of. And I avoided trying to respond to these because typically when you get a large response to something, it's very easy to get defensive and argumentative, and I, I didn't want to do that. But now that some time has passed, I'd like to take the opportunity to address kind of the three big groups of comments that I saw. The first one is, you didn't answer the question, I don't know how to code. Um, and you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I very deliberately did not provide any resources. I didn't go say, look at Code Academy. I didn't say, study the MIT Open Course, or I didn't say, buy a book from Prague Progs. Um, I deliberately said, you know, figure out a problem, and then I gave you no resources whatsoever. And the reason that I didn't actually answer your question is because I think that it can't be answered. At least it's not something that I'm able to answer. What I was trying to do is to point out that I think the question is a bit too broad for many of us to answer in a helpful way. To go back to kind of the music analogy, if you were to say, I want to be a musician, and I responded by saying, here are some great resources to learn how to play the saxophone, and you have no interest in that instrument whatsoever, my information wasn't necessarily particularly helpful. And I could also argue, well, you should learn the piano, because that's an instrument where you learn a lot of musical stuff, it's going to be very transferable, blah, 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 blah. But maybe you hate the piano. Maybe it's going to be the sort of thing where if you hadn't been pushed toward it, you would become a great guitarist. But by shoving you in a particular direction, I've kind of killed your joy for something. And I don't want to do that. So what I would say in, in response to that question is, you're right. Um, and what I would suggest is, if you can narrow the question down a little bit, and then ask the people who you would have otherwise asked, how do I get started coding? Um, you know, if you say, I want to make a blog, how can I go about doing that? You're likely to get better information. Even how do I make a blog is more Googleable than how do I learn to code. You may still not get the resources you want, but you're gonna have a better time with it. Now the second response that I got, I think was largely from people who already have some programming experience, and the gist of it was, if you just try and solve problems, you're gonna solve them badly. You're gonna raise a generation of terrible, terrible programmers. What are you thinking? And again, you're absolutely right. It was not my intention to bash formal computer science education. Um, I believe that it is very important to learn best practices and to study your algorithms and to get an understanding of the mathematics behind what you're doing and understand why your code runs the way that it does. But what I would say is that if you are excited about a project, if you have something that you're trying to solve, and you discover that it is slow, or that it is buggy, or that it's very hard for you to fix problems or, or continue working on it, it's gonna become easier to sit down and say, okay, you know, maybe I actually need to learn <laughs> some of these background concepts and understand why I wrote this this way and what a better way to do that would be. If you're the type of person that can to sort of pull all of the literature that's been written about software in the last 50, 60 years um, and read through all of it and retain it and enjoy it and keep yourself motivated to keep learning without writing anything, then that's absolutely great. And do that, because that's awesome. You're going to have a great theoretical understanding. You're going to know more than most of us. Um, but I would say you're probably in the minority on that. The real takeaway was that there are multiple learning styles and that the skills are largely transferable, so don't feel like you're jumping off a cliff by learning one language. It isn't like deciding to learn Polish and going, oh shoot, I actually meant to learn Mandarin. Um, there's going to be a lot of overlap in what it is that you do, so don't be afraid to dive in and get started if there's something you're excited about. And the last point that a lot of people made uh, was, I don't know what problem I want to solve. Um, and it kind of broke down into two categories. There was one, I don't know what is solvable within the realm of computer science. And secondly, I just don't know what to be excited about or what project to pay. And you're right again. I didn't give you any sort of criteria for helping to figure that out. Um, because it's going to be a personal thing. Um, what I can do is kind of give you some advice from my own experience. Um, as far as that first question of what are computers able to do, Largely, a lot of the problems that you'll find yourself wanting to solve um, are going to be taking something that computers are already doing somewhere and doing them somewhere else. So as an example, um, my building does not have automatic rent payments. It comes in online, but I still have to go through and, and sign up and pay the thing every single month. And I know that other places are able to do automatic billing, so this is something that I know is solvable with computers, so maybe it'd be a fun idea for me to go through and write a script that would go ahead and sign on and automatically do the bill payment, and also make sure that there are no bugs in that, because, you know, 
that could end up costing a lot. As for the second question, figuring out the problems that you're interested in, uh, for me it comes from two things. One is general excitement, the, oh man, wouldn't it be really cool if I could do this thing in a video game? And then you think, well, maybe I should write an add-on or a plugin or a module or whatever it is that game happens to call it. And it could do that. That's really exciting. And the second thing is, is laziness. What are the things that you find yourself doing over and over and over again? And is it irritating? And is it something that you can automate? If it is, then maybe the excitement is, oh man, I would never ever have to do that again. And that's all just my own experience, so your mileage may vary. You may decide that what you're excited about is based on the particular software that you're using, or that you have friends who want to make a game and you want to make one with them, or whatever it may be. Um, just, just figure out what you think is cool and make cool things. Um, so I hope that that's helped address and clarify a little bit of stuff, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Cheers.